All right, let's look at point source versus line array subwoofer setups. There's a lot of debate about whether point sources or line arrays are better. Point sources are often seen as the ideal radiating method. So in this, I've got sound vision set up and you can see I've got this beautiful tower here. We can take a look where well, we've got 16 subs wide, 16 subs high. This is a single sub and it's a L Acoustics KS28 in sound vision. And I've taken two subwoofers and piled them on top of each other. So this actually is one sub and then we've also got this sub and they're right on top of each other and if we look at both of them together we see that it gets louder. So we have the ability to model and look at what it would be for all the energy to be radiated from a very small point in space and then compare that to various arrays. And anytime you put two speakers that are reproducing the same frequency range in close proximity, you form an array. And if that array is in a single dimension in relation to the frequency, you get a line. So if you put them all side by side, you get a line array horizontally. If you put them all vertically, um, you get a line array, a vertical line array. If you start to box them, then you get kind of an enlarged point source and you start to alter things in both the horizontal dimension and vertical dimension. Then you get this conical shape or other types of coverage. I've got a probe here at 15 feet away in the center. I've got a probe here. Uh, at a hundred feet center mixed position kind of off here at a 30 degree angle this one here at a, approximately a 60 degree angle this one at 250 feet and finally this one here at 500 feet each of these have a curvature so this 15 foot one is this purple one which we can see is loud because it's very close to the subwoofers. Then we've got our front of house and uh, that's this green one followed by 30 degrees off center. 60 degrees off center is the orange. 500 feet is this brown one here and probe one which I haven't labeled yet. We'll label that as 250. One of our goals typically is going to be getting a smooth coverage to have there not be drastic frequency response differentials as we walk side to side across this arc here and not to have drastic level differentials. We want, we may want consistency and that is going to be seen by how close together the bottom curve is, which is the farthest probe and the top curve which is the nearest probe to the sub. So the differential, the space between these tells us how drastic of a decibel difference. And we can look at this for a single sub and we can see at 500 feet we're at 82 dB and at 15 feet we're 112. So we got about 30 dB difference between near and far. Also these off axis ones. So we're looking for a very similar frequency response. It doesn't need to be identical. And it's okay if there's some lobes in it because we can EQ them. As long as they're all the same, we can fix it. But if they're drastically different, then it's not optimum because if we EQ for one space, it'll be off for another. Let's go to our two point. Now this is two subs piled on top of each other and it should look just like the one, but 6 dB louder and it does. Too high, tall, stacked and too wide, low. So these are two of them side by side close to the ground and this is that tall skinny stack like a single sub column. And look at this. Let's go back to our, two, our point source. And with our column, all we're really seeing as a difference is the 15 feet away mic is not getting hit quite as hard. We see a drop up close, but we see no change far away. That could be beneficial to increase the volume or to maintain the volume at distance, but reduce the volume for people up close and not blast them as much. Let's look at a four point. So there's our four point and we'll look at the difference. 15 feet away, 124. 500 feet away is 94. So again, we maintain our 30 dB differential with the point source. Too high, too wide, and we've got 
Yeah, we're seeing some off-axis change on this red and orange. These guys over here. And four wide low. This is that long, skinny, wide, uh, single high. Four high short. These are four flat stacked, like a pancake all the way up. And then four high tall, the tall narrow. And again, we're seeing a lot of stuff mess around in there. But when we get to this four high tall, this very narrow column, we're seeing a change. Let's compare that to the point source. So everything stays the same, but the people up close are seeing less of a differential. But again, it's outside of frequency range. But let's make the sub array bigger. Here's an eight point source, eight subs. Let's go to four high block. We'll go back and forth and we see a little difference there especially the off-axis stuff. We're starting to lose some um, width and we can see that in our coverage picture here as well. Eight wide low, eight high low. This is um, eight flat stacked and eight high on end. Let's go to that big column. Look at this. We've got this tall, skinny, narrow, vertical column. And now our differential between 500 feet is 100 dB to 118 dB. Now we only have an 18 dB differential between the people that are 15 feet away and the people 500 feet away. This is pretty interesting. Let's look at our point source, our ideal. And there it stayed the same far away, but it's blasting the people up close. All right, let's go to 16 and see what we get here. There's a 16 box point source. We can zoom out a bit and we've got a tremendous amount of energy. We can crunch this down. We're seeing up close 106 versus 137. We see 31 dB differential from 15 feet to 500 feet and 16 wide on end. And I'll go back so you can see the difference there. And we see it got real narrow. Now we've really kind of screwed with all this um, off-axis stuff. Um, not very desirable. 16 wide low, very narrow. Let's see, let's do some arc sub on that. And we're at 90 degrees. We can go to 120 and see if that helps us any. Uh, we got bigger differential between um, the close and far. Let's put it back at 90. And let's go to four by four, four wide, four high. Compare that to our ideal source. And it's kind of a big blocky version of it. Four by four tall, same thing, four wide, four high, but I put them on end. And that's looking a little better because it's skinnier. We're not killing the people up front as much. 16 high, low, those are um, kind of laying flat. 16 high, compare that to the point source. And look at that. By forming this line, we've reduced our volume up close in relation to the volume at distance. And then the final one, 16 high, we have a differential of 106 dB versus 120 dB. We have 14 dB differential between 15 feet away and 500 feet away. That's phenomenal. Look how smooth this is. Let's compare this to the point source. And look at how many gradations in level we have here versus this tall skinny setup where we have very few. Yet at distance, this brown line here, we are staying about the same. We got a little more volume up here and everything has come down to match that 500. So I was thinking, well, this point source, maybe the point source is too close. It's it's blasting the people up front with 130 plus dB. And the people at mix position are seeing 135 dB at mix, 104 dB 500 feet away. What if we fly this point source and get it a little farther away? So I'm gonna put it 30 feet in the air. So there's a 30 foot high point source versus on the ground. And we can see that our people 15 feet away from the ground stack are not getting blasted as much, but still it's nowhere near as tight of a coverage and consistent that we get from that long, tall setup. And then finally, let's fly this up a hundred feet. And so now the point source a hundred feet in the air and we're seeing a differential of 106 to 120. We're seeing about 14 dB differential. And if we go to our tall source, we're seeing about the same, but look at this clustering here for the tall source. 
Look at the differential between mixed position and off-axis. This is all within like four, 5 dB or 6 dB of each other. With this 100 foot away, as we get back, it's dropping off gradually. The output of 16 double 18s coming from the output of a single double 18 is not really realistic. But this is the ideal point source that we're all striving for. All this point source, we must get point source. We're striving for a point source. Is it truly desirable? Okay, so there's our kind of best scenarios. So there's the 100 foot high. There's our coverage, all the sound coming from up here. We can go to the 30 foot high and we're blasting up close. All the sound coming from there. And we can go to all the sound coming from here. And finally, the big long column and the coverage associated with it, which is the best array for coverage and consistency and the way they impact our coverage and frequency response. Maybe you can begin to see why there's tendencies towards certain arrays and speaker designs for coverage. So, point sources versus line arrays, they differ in the way they cover. The ideal source may not be ideal for all environments, especially if you're looking for consistency over distance. Now, I did this with subwoofers. The application of this concept to vertical line arrays for covering large spaces is the same. And we can look at that in the future as well. Cool, cool.